We've been developing our Future of Conflict program over the past few years. It has three pillars. The first is technology and conflict uh, with a special focus on social media. Second is climate and conflict, which looks at climate as a threat multiplier that, that exacerbates other conflict risks. And third, the economics of conflict, which uses innovative data and economic techniques to explore war economies and the role of the private sector in the peace and security realm. Our future of conflict work starts from the same premise that all crisis group work does, that putting local granular research at the center of our analysis yields the most important insights for preventing and resolving conflict. That's why all of our thematic work is done jointly with our regional work so that the two reinforce each other. Social media has just fundamentally changed how we communicate, what information we see, whose ideas we see. And this has come with greater opportunities for freedom of information, government accountability, and online activism. For many, this was really exemplified by the Arab Spring, which some dubbed the Twitter revolution. But social media has also been used to exacerbate conflicts, in some cases strategically. Misinformation and disinformation, hate speech, and propaganda have all affected conflict dynamics. In the Rohingya crisis, Myanmar's military fed an existing ethno-religious tension to its boiling point, often through false or misleading information designed to vilify the Muslim minority, which caused widespread violence and drove hundreds of thousands of Rohingya from the country. ISIS has used social media for propaganda and recruitment, including in the West. During the Israel-Palestine conflict, we saw the organization of anti-Palestinian violence via WhatsApp. But there are also a lot of positive dimensions to social media. It's allowed greater communication among activists, increasingly allowing citizens to directly challenge their governments. In areas where traditional media is largely state controlled, it offers independent sources of information, and it's been critical in tracking and disseminating information about human rights and conflict dynamics on the ground. The International Crisis Group's research often highlights these tensions. Social media has been central to activism after Myanmar's coup, even though the military previously used it to fuel violence. Social media has provided independent sources of news in Cameroon, even as, as it facilitates hate speech. Social media has been important for the Venezuelan opposition, increasingly in exile, to communicate among one another, but it is reflecting and exacerbating polarization as well. Social media companies and governments are struggling to govern online spaces in a way that preserves this freedom of expression but doesn't actually fuel violence. And this is in part a challenge because of the unique dynamics of different crises and how, and how social media influences these dynamics. Reducing harm will require understanding the impact of social media and moderation policies on specific conflicts. <laughs>